Hi guys, how are you? In this video, we're going to learn more about meta heuristics and in particular, we're going to see how they compare to other optimization methods. And for that, we're going to use this unifying framework uh, put forward by Talby, uh, where we can see the different optimization methods and how they relate to each other. So the first division we could make of optimization methods is into two separate classes. One is exact methods and the other one is approximate methods. Exact methods provide uh, the optimum for sure. They guarantee that if you use that method, you will get the best possible uh, solution. So you may wonder why, why, why shouldn't we use those then? Well, because very often we, we cannot. It would take too long to find that optimal solution. But in those cases where these exact methods can be applied and they give um, the solution in a reasonable, reasonable amount of time, we should certainly use them. So within this class of exact methods, there is a whole range of families of algorithms like the A star family, dynamic programming, constraint programming, and the family of branch and X algorithms like branch and bound, branch and cut, branch and price. And, and these are different algorithms that they always guarantee uh, providing the optimum. Okay, meta heuristics, as we've seen, they, they do not guarantee providing the optimum. So they belong to this second class of optimization methods that is called approximate methods. And here, these approximate methods, they may provide high quality solutions in a reasonable amount of time, but they do not guarantee the optimality of the obtained solutions. That is what defines these approximate methods. And within these approximate methods, we've got two classes. One is heuristic algorithms and the other one is approximation algorithms. Um, notice that approximate methods and approximation algorithms are two different classes. Approximation algorithms is a subclass of approximate methods. Approximation algorithms, what they do is, okay, they do not guarantee providing the optimum, but at least they guarantee that you get sufficiently close to the optimum. They, they provide bounds on both the quality of the solution they give and on the runtime that it may take to, to run the algorithm. So basically they provide theoretical bounds that are guaranteed to, to be achieved. Okay, how, how do they do that? Because how, how can you provide a bound on how close you are to a solution if you don't know the solution. Um, well, they use different techniques. Um, a strategy that is often used is called relaxation. And relax relaxation is, is a modeling strategy that consists basically in rather than solving the problem you want to solve, what you do is to focus on a simpler problem that relates to the original problem, but is, is easier to solve you solve this problem that is easier and and maybe by doing so you gain some information about the optimum of the original problem what what's the kind of easier problem uh, we're going to solve well maybe you eliminate some constraints or maybe rather than assuming that the variables in your original problem are discrete, you assume that they are real and that makes things easier. So basically relaxation is just solving uh, an easier problem with the hope that the solution of this easier problem will give you some information about the solution of the original problem. And, and that's, that's one of the strategies that allows us to, to provide theoretical bounds on on certain algorithms. And we also have these heuristic algorithms. Heuristic algorithms do not provide the optimum for sure. 
and they do not even provide any kind of theoretical bound. And within heuristic algorithms, we've got the problem-specific heuristics, which are designed to solve specific problems. And then we've got, uh, at last, the meta-heuristics, which are general purpose algorithms. They're not specific to any particular problem. They can be used for, in principle, for any, any problem. As we've seen, they do not guarantee the optimum at all. They do not provide any a theoretical bound on how close we may get to the optimum, but they usually provide good solutions in a reasonable, reasonable amount of time. And well, within these meta heuristics are can be further subdivided into different classes that we're gonna see in 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 the following video. But for now, let's let's just um, remember that. So. These are different uh, definitions that different um, scholars have given about meta heuristics. Maybe none of them is is fully satisfying, but but they each of them provides uh, some or emphasizes some aspect of the uh, meta heuristics that that is useful to remember. Well, first the topic was coined by Glover in 1986, and uh, it. It uses two Greek words or words that have a Greek etymology. Meta, as you know, means beyond or at a higher level. And heuristic means in Greek to, to find, to search, to discover. So this refers to, to higher level algorithms that um, are used to optimize something, to find the solution of, of something. So particularly interesting points in, in each of these definitions is, as we've seen, it's a high-level problem-independent algorithm. And, and also, they usually provide sufficiently good solutions. They do not guarantee to reach the optimum, but they will give you a, a good enough solution. And they're us usually useful when you deal with incomplete or imperfect information or limited computational ca capacity. And the last definition by, by Luke uh, says that meta heuristic is a rather unfortunate term, basically because it encompasses a huge family of different methods. And all these methods, what, what is true is that they can be seen as, as part of a, a major field in, in optimization, which is stochastic optimization. Stochastic means that we are going to use some random component that it is not deterministic. So we're going to use some randomness in order to try to find a, a, good, a good solution to, to very hard problems. So just to summarize this video, what are the advantages and, and drawbacks of meta heuristics? Well, a major advantage is that is is a problem independent um, set of tools. So so you can apply these algorithms pretty much to to any problem. They usually work really well in practice, and and they're easy to implement. And, and many of them are even easy to parallelize. So you can use different. You can use a whole range of, of CPUs or computational grids to, to make your algorithms run much faster. Where are the drawbacks? Well, they're not exact. So we, we don't know whether we will get the best solution or, or not. And, and usually you don't get the best solution, but hopefully uh, one that is good enough. They're not deterministic, they're stochastic. That means that if you run the same algorithm on the same data, you may get a different solution, and, and that is that, that is not very good usually. And then, often they they have very poor theoretical foundations. They work. We don't really understand why they work so well, but 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 they usually work pretty well. So with this, we finish this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. See you later, guys. Cheers.